Hi, it's Russ from Protos Expert, and I'm going to show you a really cool trick that was shown to me by a fellow author over at Groove 3, Doug Zangar. Brilliant, brilliant trick. He shared it with Cubase, but I then went away and thought, let's see if we can figure it out and make it work in Pro Tools, because this could be, for some of you, a, a really useful now, uh, and particularly helpful when Pro Tools 11 ships, because what it enables us to do is to have any audio and any MIDI coming into Pro Tools, any. Uh, as long as they're AU or a audio units. Uh, and so uh, most things ship as audio units for Mac. So if you have a, a, a plugin uh, that w w is art as an audio units now and it's not shipping as AX from the day that Pro Tools 11 ships, then this could be your saving grace. Of course, this isn't uh, the best way. Of course, you want it native, but in, in, in the interim, this could be very helpful. And for those uh, plugins that will never, ever be Artaz or AX, this is very cool. Let me play you at first what, what I've got going here. Very simple. That bass is being played via main stage, which of course is Logic Instruments. So I've now got all the Logic Instruments and all the Logic Effects being routed back into Pro Tools. And that's live as well. So literally if I play there's the MIDI coming in playing the MIDI in it's playing main stage and it's coming back into Pro Tools and one of the cool things straight away depending on what you've got going if, if you actually then got set up on main stage you can actually do patch changes which you can't even do with the internal instruments on Pro Tools so that's that's a bonus straight away so let's show you how it's all done because this is very very cool because the other thing as I say is this runs both in 32-bit and 64-bit so when Pro Tools 11 comes that won't be an issue in fact I'm running this in 64-bit now into a, into into 32-bit Pro Tools 10 so I could basically come in I could go new we won't save that one for a minute. I'm just going to get one up that's a uh, blank keyboard setting. So this is just going to be a very blank panel. So, and having instead of having the EVP, I can come to audio units, noise maker. Now this is playing here via via Pro Tools. How cool is that? So let me show you how it's all done. So I'm just going to switch this all off for a second. So main stage is back to there. The first thing you need to do is you need to go, if you haven't already got it on your machine, is go up to cycling74.com and get Soundflower. It's a free download, works on most versions of the Mac OS. I'm running this on uh, Mountain Lion or and uh, I think Mountain Go, as we call it on the show, uh, and you install it. It's a free download. You install it. Then you need to restart your machine. Then what you'll have, you'll know if it's been installed properly, because then what you can do is you come into System Preferences, and if you go to Sound, you'll come down here, and you'll see Soundflare 2 channel and 64 channel. They're both in there now. The next thing we need to do, say so Doug is a genius for showing me this, is go into the Audio MIDI setup, audio, audio MIDI setup and go to the Audio window, and you need to create an aggregate device. I've called it Main Stage Door. So I have Forte as my native audio card. So that's, that's doing all the audio in and out of Pro Tools. Then we have Soundflower. I'm running it in two channel for now, but there's a 64 channel version as well. Soundflower then coming in as well. So there, that's an aggregate device. If you've not made an aggregate device before, it's dead easy. Click the plus sign here, create aggregate device. And you just choose what you want. So I'm gonna choose Forte. So this may say, uh, this may change here. This may say instead it may uh, adjust sample rate, which you might need to do with two interfaces and you go sound flare. So those two are now, the one at the top takes priority. Uh, that's all sorted. And then you can set the sample rate as well. So we'll delete that again. It's as easy as that. Then I've named it main stage door. So there we have Forte and Soundflower coming in. So 
Then you need to go to Pro Tools and you need to come to Setup, Playback Engine, and then you need to select, instead of all your, your normal ones, you need to select Main Stage Door, which is the one I just created as an aggregate device. Then all the, the normal stuff happens. Now the other thing you might need to do, depending on how your Pro Tools is set up already, is you might then need to come to the I.O. settings and make sure the inputs and the outputs are set here correctly. If they're not, you might have the inputs and outputs set for some other device. And if that's wrong, wrong, the quickest way to fix that is to delete all of those on the input and delete them all on the output and just hit default and it will set up what's available on that, on that device you've now got attached, which is our aggregate device. You can even name them then. So I've named them because that's handy. Otherwise, you can have one and two showing up twice. So then we now have, as you can see, this aggregate device showing us inputs and outputs. The other thing you need to do using the audio MIDI setup is go to MIDI window and make sure you've got your IAC driver switched on. Double click. It should be dark if it's on. Now I've got to, and then make sure it has an IAC bus. You only need one, but just I've chosen one and two and set that up. So now basically the IAC is going to handle the MIDI and the audio side that I just showed you is going to handle the audio. Then it's as simple as coming into Pro Tools, creating a MIDI track. So that's a MIDI track I've created. And I've got my Keystation MIDI coming in. Now Doug advised, it doesn't seem to be a problem in Pro Tools, but Doug advised that you don't leave that on all because if you do, you can get feedback. And it's also, as you see in Pro Tools, it's pretty smart. It's worked out that I can't have the IAC driver as my input because it will create a feedback loop, which is nice. So I can choose any input now. So I can choose my impulse if I want. And that will then play from the, the impulse. And then what I need to do now is open main stage. And do a quick, quick start. The cool thing is it's... It's going to open that's in full screen, so we'll just make that down to, to, to smaller again. Let's just make that smaller. And the only other thing you need to do then is make sure it's going to default here to the outputs being 1 and 2. Right mouse click, change all, output to output 5 and 6, which is the sound flower. So here we are. And I'll just record something in. Let's just try it then. And now we have in there this. Just loop that round. The old Pro Tools problem of it uh, missing the start. Now we can come to main stage. This stuff is now available to Pro Tools and go in the reverbs. EQ it. So there we are. That's how you use any external device. And as I say, we can then pull in an audio unit set synth if I want to out of main stage, bring it in here, anything that's available as an AU instrument, 32-bit, and effects as well, they all will be hosted in here and working in Pro Tools. Now at the moment, Pro Tools 10 will work in 32-bit, but at 64-bit, remember, this isn't using rewire or anything, this is simple audio and MIDI coming back through. And as I say, the cool thing is then, we should be able to use uh, any instrument within Pro Tools without any worries, whether it's a 64-bit uh, AX or not. There we go. Big, big thumbs up to Z Doug Zangar for showing me this trick and uh, see you again soon.